So in the last video we derived the time dilation formula. It looks something like this. It said the time measured by like the moving observer, you know, this person on the train, let's say, is going to be equal to, it was this crazy root, 1 minus v squared over c squared, v being the speed of that moving observer as measured by someone that, you know, it thinks they're not moving. And then multiplied by the time measured by the person in the, you know, at rest. So I'll just say the person on the ground. Let's say there was someone on the ground watching someone in the train. This is the time dilation formula. So sometimes people say this, and I'm just as guilty. They say something like, moving clocks run slow. This is a terrible, <laughs> this is a terrible way to say this. Moving clocks run slow. It's terrible because... In relativity, the whole idea of relativity is that you can't tell who's moving and who isn't moving. So, you know, the moving, as in we have no idea who that is, clocks run slow, this is this is meaningless. This is po poetry hinting at this formula. But the question you could ask is like, how do we know whose clock is moving? We can't. Relativity, you guys just told me we can't tell who's really moving and who's not moving in relativity. So this is a bad way to say it. The better way to say it, and you'll see why we make it poetic here, the better way to say it is something like, uh, clocks that are measured to be moving will be measured to run slow by that person doing the measuring of that moving. You see, it doesn't really roll off the tongue very easily. Like, this sounds better. Gets the idea across. It's kind of meaningless, though. Like, moving clocks, we can't tell who's moving. Um, and worse, you might be bothered by, like, wait, if we can't tell who's moving, then, like, shouldn't we be able to swap out these T's? And doesn't that mean that red should see black's clock moving fast. So in other words, if black measures the red clock moving slow, doesn't red have to measure the black clock moving fast? And then isn't that a way to determine who's actually moving? So all kinds of like mysteries abound here. So I wanna clear these up conceptually in this video. There's a seeming paradox at the heart of special relativity when you start learning it about this time dilation formula. And that paradox is that we can't tell who's moving. What this means is that black's going to measure red clocks to run slow and red is going to measure black clocks to run slow. This sounds like a contradiction. I thought it was impossible. The first time I heard it, I was like, that's impossible. I said, if black, I was like, if black measures red clocks to run slow, then red better move, measure black clocks to run faster. None of this is actually consistent, but it is. And in this video, I'm going to tell you how it's consistent. It's wild. It's hard to understand. That's why I'm going to do the conceptual idea first, and then we'll do the math later. Because if I just do the math and you don't understand the concept, it's not going to mean anything. So I'm just going to tell you the map of how we're going to show how is it possible that red measures the black clocks to run slow and at the same time, black is going to be measuring the red clocks to also run slow. Seems impossible. I'm going to show you how it's done. Okay, so uh, what do we do? Well, um, one idea is that if we take the black perspective, you know, you got to take someone's perspective. Let's say we're observing this from the ground and I see this person on the train moving to the right, there is sort of a difference here. Look at the red, the person in the red reference frame only has to use one clock to measure this process. So when you're doing this time dilation, you know, light clock, the light goes up to the ceiling, comes back down, but red's rolling right along with it. Red doesn't even think they're moving. So they see the clock go right up and come back down. They only need one clock to measure what happens here. Um, Black's going to need many clocks. So let's say you've already figured out how to make your light clocks, and then you make other clocks based on those. If you wanted to measure, say, the time it took for this light to go up and then back down, red only needs one clock to measure it. Black's going to need two, at least two different clocks, at least two different clocks, because this light's going to go up, come back down. This clock that black used to time the starting of the event, or at least note when the event started, that is to say when the light was shot up, can't be the same actual physical clock as the one that measures when that light hits the ground because, you know, it's going to be over here. So I guess, you know, black could pick up his clock, run with this red, but now black would be in red's reference frame and they would agree on everything. So we're not trying to do that. If you're on the ground measuring this process, you need at least two clocks, one for the beginning, one for the end. Yes, you could let the light like get back to you and then time it that way. But, you know, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. And the simplest way to sort of think about this is just Imagine black has this army of clocks everywhere along this line. That way, if anything ever occurs, black can tell you, oh, it happened at exactly this moment. And these clocks are all synced up as far as black is concerned. Okay, so um, how in the world is it the case then that, you know, both people measure each other's clocks running slow? First of all, let me, let me up the ante. Let me actually, like, put my chips into the table and just show you how weird this is. So 
Let's say, uh, let's put some numbers in here. Let's say red's moving to the right at 0.6 the speed of light. If that's the case, and black measures that this light took five seconds to go up and down, it was kind of mis you know, this is ridiculous. This is a ridiculous example. This train would have to be really tall for this to take five seconds, but you could turn this into microseconds or nanoseconds and be fine. I just want to keep the numbers simple. So let's say black measured that this process up and then down took five seconds. Um, red, if you plug into the time dilation formula, if you put 0.6 C into this V right over here and calculate for red T on the train, you'd get four seconds. So go ahead and try it if you don't believe me. You know, plug in five seconds for this time on the ground, plug in your values. Red would only measure four seconds. So black's like, ah, gotcha. Your clock measured four seconds. My clock measured five seconds. Your clock's running slow, red. And so how do you get out of this? Well, it's, you know, let's ask what red sees. This is weird. Check this out. This is why I'm saying I'm up in the ante. Red's going to be like, okay, come on over here. You know, they don't think they're moving. They look at their clock. They're like, ah, my clock reads four seconds when this light hits the ground. Well, they're now right in front of this black clock here. What does red see on this black clock right in front of them that black is saying is reading five seconds? Red looks at this clock and agrees. Black's clock is reading five seconds at the moment the light hit the ground. You know, and black's feeling really good about themselves. They're like, ha, gotcha. You even admitted your clock's running slow because your clock, red, is only reading four seconds and my clock is reading five seconds. Therefore, you're the one moving and I'm at rest. But red will not concede. Red is not going to give up here. And it seems like red's being irrational. It's like, come on, red. You got you to gotta give up at this point. You've got to admit that black's got you here, but they don't. Red is not going to concede that uh, they're the one moving. In fact, red's going to double down and say, no, actually, your clock is running slowly. This clock here, this black clock that reads five seconds is running slowly. And black's like, what are you talking about? It's got more time measured on it than your clock. How could it be running slow? And red's going to say, because when we started this experiment, you did not have all your clocks in sync. That is to say, when we started this experiment, this clock over here was not reading zero. See, Black, you're assuming this clock got all the way from zero to five seconds in the time that this light went up and down. Red's going to be like, uh-uh-uh-uh. This clock had a head start. It was like set forward. So let me show you what that means. Let me just give you an idea of what I'm talking about here. Um, Red's going to be like, no, no, no. When we started this experiment, yes, our clocks at the origin were reading zero. We both read zero. Great. And we just, you know, that's just a convention in special relativity. We just assume that's always the case. You don't have to do it that way. It's just simplest to do it that way. But red's going to be like, uh-uh-uh. See, when my clock read zero and your clock read zero, that clock down the line that's eventually going to measure this laser pulse that went up and then down, this clock that's eventually going to measure the moment when this light struck the ground, that clock down the line, Black, that clock started at 1.8 seconds at the moment our clocks read zero. They weren't in sync. In other words, red's going to say, you cheated. Red's going to be like, black, you cheated. Uh, that clock down the line was not at zero when we started the experiment. It was 1.8. And since it started at 1.8 at the moment this light left the ground, red's going to say that this black clock over here went from 1.8 to 5 seconds. Remember, that's what the clock read down here when the light hit the ground. Therefore, your clock black only went through 3.2 seconds and that's less than that's less than the four seconds that passed by on my red clock therefore red con concludes it's actually black's clock that's running slow red's gonna say my my time in my frame took four seconds for this light to go up and down your time in your frame only took 3.2 seconds gotcha and then black's gonna be like what are you talking about my clocks were all in sync you know, Black goes back and checks. I'm like, wait, 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 let me check this again. Let's do it again. You know, run it back. And Black checks. Are all my clocks in sync? Yep. Me measures initially, and Black thinks that all of these read zero. Red is not going to concede that all these read zero. Red's going to think that these were not in sync. And this is just an irreconcilable difference. Moving people in different reference frames are not going to agree on what's called simultaneity. They won't agree that two events occurred simultaneously um, in all reference frames. So... In other words, black says, okay, when my clock at the origin read zero, all these clocks read zero. This was a simultaneous event. That is to say, all the hands were pointing straight up at the moment all the other hands were pointing straight up, and these were all simultaneous moments. Red's going to be like, nah, uh, uh What was simultaneous was origin clock hands up, and then 
the moment that clock was hands up, uh, the one down the line was a little further, and the one that was eventually going to re read the light hit the ground was actually all the way at 1.8 seconds. So this origin clock reading zero, and this clock down the line reading 1.8 was simultaneous according to red. They don't agree on simultaneity. In fact, this is almost always the way out of these like paradoxes. Humans are just not good at thinking about the universe in terms of lack of simultaneity objectivity. Simultaneity is not an objective concept. It turns out it's a subjective concept, and this is almost always the way out of all these paradoxes. Now, um, this is the co concept. Let me just reiterate it so it's clear, and then we'll do the math later. The reason why red can measure black clocks to run slow and black can measure red clocks to run slow is that they don't agree on what's simultaneous. And so when they're using their army of clocks to measure stuff, they're going to think someone else got a head start. You know, they're going to be like, oh, no, 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 no. That clock that you think, yeah, that did indeed get to a farther time, actually started fast. It started at 1.8, therefore it only ticked off this much time. So we're not talking about the reading on the clock. Red's going to be like, oh, that clock only evolved through 3.2 seconds in the time this light went up and down. Therefore, your clock's running slow. And what's amazing is if you, if you do the time dilation formula in reverse, right? So red thinks that black's moving this way. So red's going to be like, okay, time measured by the moving observer, that is to say ground, you know, red thinks the person on the ground is flying left with all their clocks, equals the square root, 1 minus v squared, again, put in that like 0.6c. So we think the speed is points. If black thinks red moves 0.6c to the right, red thinks black moves 0.6c to the left, put that in there. And then plug in the 4 seconds. Um four seconds here, guess what this will spit out? You know, red can use the same formula. And if you plug this in, guess what it spits out? It spits out 3.2. It works for everybody. It's amazing. It's actually freaking amazing to me that relativity works at all. I wouldn't have thought that it's logically consistently possible because it just felt like if one person measures the other clock running slow, then that other person has to measure the first clock running fast. But not only does it work, this one formula takes care of all of it. In fact, it's got to, because there can't be different formulas for different observers. Otherwise, we would know who's the one that's actually moving. We'd be like, oh, you're using the weird formula. You must be the one moving. And then relativity wouldn't be relativity at all. Relativity says that you can't tell who's actually moving. Okay, so simultaneity is the way out of this. Uh, different reference frames will not agree on events being simultaneous or not. And uh, we've got two things to do in the next video. One is like, okay, I need to prove that. Why? why exactly do we not agree on what's simultaneous and so why why do we disagree on simultaneity and okay what is the math like how do you actually get how far off the clocks will be i just told you that red would measure this black clock reading 1.8 at the moment uh you know these origins intersected how do i how did i figure that out so that's what that's what i'm gonna do in the next video tackle both of these but I just wanted to get the concept down, because if you don't understand the concept, who cares about the math if you don't understand the concept? So that's the concept. We'll do the math next time. We'll keep making progress here.